get started after quite such a buildup as we've had into all of this. I hope we can live up to that. Um, and before proceeding, I'd like to cycle back onto something that Al said uh, regarding participation here, that, uh, that the work that we're doing, we've really learned to do from doing this, from taking a, a basic component of our work, a basic idea, and coming out and meeting with people, exposing it, testing it, kind of dialoguing back and forth on it, very heuristically tuning it so that it seems to fit both in terms of how we're conveying it or presenting it, and in terms of how we're designing it at a much deeper level. Like Al mentioned, uh, the kind of drive for this whole process that we bring is one of, uh, one of, of being learners ourselves. And that today, perhaps, as we're together during this time to get to this afternoon, I'd like you to, to be learners and not only listen to what we're saying or look at what we're doing from a point of view of um, the knowledge you have about the subject matter, but your experience of it right now, that as you're learning with us, to, to speak from or speak from there with that voice, so to speak. Um, before I go on to talk about technology, which is part of the reason that we're here, I want to lay some background down about what seems to be occurring in the world regarding what we call the profoundly practical significance of learning. That before we talk about how technology can serve learners or education, I want to make sure we have some better common understanding of what we mean by serving learner. What, what constitutes a learner? What makes for excellent learning? What is learning? And I know so, to some of you this may be material that's all um, been thought through, but, but I think that uh, there's some things we're bringing to it that you'll find interesting. <clears throat> now, towards this end, what I want to do is look at the significance of learning as it's emerging in business, as it's emerging in the science of wellness regarding individual human beings, how it's emerging in various educational research uh, processes, and suggest that all of these things are really pointing to something, while perhaps not new, something significantly different than the way education is oriented. And as we get into that conversation, we can talk about uh, learning, the learner, and the relationship of learning and the learner to technology. Thank you. Part of our travels in this group called Learning Insights uh, take us into uh, research modes and dialogue modes with people that are pursuing the significance of learning in different settings. So for example, we, I have, or people in our team have, visited with these companies mentioned up there, IBM, General Motors, Apple, Harley-Davidson, the Swiss Hotel, uh, Pacific Bell, Hewlett-Packard, Kodak, <clears throat> and others, trying to get a handle on what is the significance of learning to Fortune 500 companies. Um, in addition to that, we've done uh, a series of dialogues with organizational scientists at MIT, at Harvard, at Oxford University, and we've met with consultants such as Tom Peters, and well, we haven't met with Deming, Deming, we're very familiar with his work. The thing that I want to do is suggest um, that if you do look at what's happening in the business community in the Fortune 500 to Fortune 1000 in the United States, you find that the executive boards in the boardrooms are becoming more and more concerned with what's called a learning organization. How is it that they start to operate internally in terms of their management practices, their information collection practices, uh, their training departments, their HR development uh, activities, as if what they're really trying to do is steward the development of a learning organization. Um, this is entirely consistent with the kind of organizational uh, design research that's being done at uh, universities, as I mentioned, like Harvard, uh, where Chris Arduous's work on skilled incompetence and, and organizational learning, or uh, MIT, with people like Peter Singe, perhaps some of you encountered the book, The Fifth Discipline, subtitled The Art and Practice of the Learning Organization, or people like uh, Bill Isaacs. Um, the point being that in organizational science within business, and in organizational science within universities studying business and articulating future 
business practices, what they're, what they're all seem to be coming to is something that Tom Peters said, the business of business is learning, and that the best phrase in the bunch, for me anyway, in this is Deming's phrase, which was, the only sustainable advantage of an organization is learning. That, taken another way, you could say that customers are going to change, vendors are going to change, employees are going to change, the particular technology at any given time is going to change, the particular management methodology that's hot today is going to change. All of these things are going to fluctuate and vary. The thing that's going to make an organization have a sustainable advantage in the marketplace, in the world, is how well the organization as a system is facilitating the learning of the people in it and facilitating its own growth to become a better learning system. And that it's remarkable that the leading edge of organizational design and consulting at the university level, at the uh, $40,000 a talk level that Peters and Deming command, and at the management and executive committee level in companies like uh, Apple and IBM, where IBM spends a billion dollars a year on internal education. And uh, insurance companies like Allstate spend $300 million a year. It's a massive, fundamental, top-line expense of doing business now to become a better educated system. And again, cycling back, what we're learning from all this is that the business of business is learning, that the only sustainable advantage is learning, that if you are to remove all the people from an organization and look at its communications, its telephone systems, its computer networks, its uh, cellular proximity in the way that cubes are arranged within a building, or the way that buildings are laid out, or the way that reporting policies or organizational charts function, that all of these things are learning systems. They all mediate how people relate to one another. And the degree to which they really were designed with the intention of facilitating learning is the degree to which, to a large extent, that organization is effective, is efficient. Not because these people are philosophers of learning and interested in the, 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 the intellectual, philosophical beauty of being learning-oriented, but because fundamentally, in terms of profitability, the, the capacity of an organization to respond to its context to develop relationships with its customers which, in which the customer is ever better able to differentiate the real value that the supplier company is bringing in terms of the relationship with vendors, employees, anywhere you want to apply it, the healthy organization is an organization whose relationships could be characterized as becoming ever more learning oriented for very, very practical reasons. Maybe before I go on to the psychological component of this, as again I started, I said that I want to lay down a couple of, of really disparate pegs in our minds together that we can move from as we get into the technology and into, into the learning issues more specifically. And that one of them had to do with business. This one, we want to travel a little bit into psychology, but was there anything I said about the first part about business that wasn't obvious? <laughs> I guess not. That's good. Okay. In uh, perhaps not remarkably, perhaps remarkably, the fields of study that relate to uh, the psychology of well-being in individuals, both in terms of physiological uh, health, uh, uh, wellness, health sciences, uh, psychological well-being, um, physical rehabilitation, creativity studies, what is it that makes somebody creative or what is the sustaining edge of being creative. The uh, 